We had an introduction to talk about the soul and the body, and now we're talking about a spirit part of man, which is the third part of the holistic model of man. And we talk about how in depression it affects the the mind and the soul. The mind is a fulcrum where where it all falls apart. So there's a mind, the body, and the spirit. And the spirit part of man, you have the part where there's an intuition, your conscience, your creativity, and there's a part where you actually connect with God. So as a part that connects to the supernatural realm, I don't know what God means to you, but I'm talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's my God, and he's the one that I know. I know you might believe other things, and I'm not knocking what you believe. I'm telling you what works, or what I found work, what's worked for me, and I found work for others. I don't, um, you know, I don't question your faith or argue about your faith. I'm talking about my faith, and I know that it works all the time. I know that many times when we look at depression on just the realm of the physical, or the mental, we struggle to effectively fix those who are really broken. But when we look at it in the holistic level of the spirit, soul, and body, we have results. But even in addictions also, it's very clear that when you apply the spiritual part to addictions, there's a better result than just um, using the, the opioid, you know, opioid replacements like methadone and suboxone and cajun and sublocaine and all that kind of stuff. The, uh, and of course, the newer drugs people are trying those days, but I found that it's better to just... Um, Many times when you add the spirit part to it, or part to it a bigger pardon, there's a bigger, a quicker, a more powerful, a more lasting effect. And that saying that says, always an addict, once you're an addict is wrong, once you apply the part to it. So back to the spirit part of man, you see, there's something called the Word of God, which is the Bible, and the promises that God has made in the Bible that God always fulfills, if applied correctly, applied in faith and applied in a very firm, confident way. You must be bold about what you believe in. And I'm bold about what I believe, because what I believe in always works all the time. In fact, the Bible says that the word I believe is, is a rule. That means it's what you base everything on, everything by. It's the truth. That means all truth must line up with the truth. It's the life. That means all life must line up with the life. So when you line up the your your life, to the word as a rule, as a truth of your whole life, not based on what, what whoever tells you, then from what I experienced at TFC and at TSMI is that there's always a breakthrough that way. So going back to depression and the spirit, you know, the Bible says that in Ephesians chapter 6, that's, that's what is the excellent goodness of his power towards us that believe? It says he's a cardin, I think I said it before, a cardin to the working of his mighty power, so if you look at those scriptures, I'm not sure if I shared it before, but I'll share it again. That it says, what is the accident greatness? It's a rhetoric question, meaning that imagine or think about the greatness that it says it is exceeding greatness of his power towards us that believe. The world there is a word hyper below. And it means that imagine the target you're talking about. The power of God goes beyond that target. So if it's um whatever you want to call it. The power that is available to you goes beyond that target. It says towards us that I believe. It says it's according or kata or same as the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. It seems like a very simple statement. But understand that when he says he raised him from the dead, the Bible says that with the hand of God, God went to the earth and with his hand he shook the earth and he uprooted his son in, in you know you know in resurrection. That's the power of God. So the power you have available to you as a child of God, Ephesians chapter one is so brilliant. It says a lot of things I promise you as it does with the whole chapter. It's such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful chapter in the Bible. But here the God says God the Psalm says David talks about how God God's hand erupted his son and he was the hand of God that resurrected him. But in the gospels when you just had one well, of the interesting arguments or state, well, kind of dialogues with some, some interesting folks, he said that with a finger of God, he cast out devils with a finger of God. He might say, devils, oh, cast out, oh, that's a big thing. But God says the power you have is not that of casting out devils, that's a finger of God. Sorry, I'm, I'm not point, sorry, I'm pointing my finger. <laughs> I'll be told by my team that I'm pointing my finger. And I'm not being rude. So, you know, 
Oh, there's a pointy finger. That's just uh, there's not the other one. There's just a pointy finger. <laughs> Come on now. Let's have a humor, a little bit of humor. So he says, it's the power of God. The power of God is the hand of God. So with God's finger, we cast out devils. But with the hand of God, we raised, he raised up Jesus. He says, it's according to the working of his mighty power. His muscle, his power, his might, his everything. He raised up according to the working of his mighty power. But if he raised up Christ far above every principality and power and might and dominion. So the working that you have is the same measure of power he wrought in raising up Jesus. And it's placed you to have authority and power above principalities, above powers, above rulers of darkness and wicked spirits. And it says, and every name that is named, that is the scripture. Every name that is named, not only in this world, but in that to come. See, faith says, hey, God, I've got a problem. What's it, son? Chronic fatigue syndrome. Ooh, that's a name. So what can I do for you? I'm good of it, son, dad. Okay. So the name is what? Chronic fatigue syndrome. Okay. The power I gave you is the power of resurrection above every name, including chronic fatigue syndrome. That is name not only in this world but in that to come. If you spend time working that into your mind, into your subject, that the power I have available to me is above every name. Therefore, I command this thing. You gotta go get out of my body, and you work hard on that. You empty your your um your subconscious mind of all that junk, and replace it with the word that says. It's above every name that is named, not only in this world, but in that to come. That is when you trigger on the spiritual part of your life. When you speak those words to yourself constantly, you are releasing angels to go and answer. But also the angels hearken to the voice of his word. So you are making them go and, 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 and begin to bring to pass the word you speak. And that is where you see change. Because in speaking the word of God and confessing the word, the word confession in the Bible, the word homologo, means to say the same things that God says. So when you say the same things that God says about your situation, it goes in your ears, goes into your heart, goes into your soul, cleans up your soul, and then starts to change your life all around. And that's where the spiritual part of man happens. Because in your spirit being, you have the intuition, you have your conscience, you have your creativity. And that's how you communicate with God. You communicate with God with those areas. So when you're able to heal by using those words to wake up your spirit man, you can start to create your life free of depression because the creativity of man is in the spirit. So when God in, in, in invades your spirit and evokes it, you've got to operate in faith. That's why Jude says that building up yourself in your most holy faith. How do you build up your faith? By praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues. There's one of the keys of depression, praying in tongues. So when you pray in tongues, you're building up your faith, then you can walk in the boldness. Don't let anybody fool you. I say, no, no, you can't speak in tongues. It's only for some people. No, no, the tongues I'm talking about is the tongues that Jesus Christ spoke about in Mark 16. It says that in my name they shall cast out devils, shall speak with new tongues. So you can speak in a new tongue. The other tongues, which is the one that is the horizontal tongues, is when you speak a word in church. Paul says, when you speak to the church, the word, make sure you interpret what you said to the church. That's different. The tongues I talk about is the tongues of warfare, where Jesus Christ says, in my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak the new tongues. The first two things are the things that churches many times fight against. Casting out devils, speaking in tongues. So you must understand that those are important things to fight this issue with. We can go deeper and we teach about this a lot. But in depression, to really succeed, you have to beef up your spirit, man, and sort out your 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 soul. That's your the thoughts and the words that have been spoken to you about your life, and then handle the body. Mean that you got to the things you eat, the things you drink, exercise. You know, people you and then all the kind of stuff. Then of course the soul. People you talk to. So in a nutshell, is a holistic part of fixing depression. And I'm going to go into that in the next session as I wrap up this whole series. Hope it's blessed you.